Hi, welcome back to the channel. I'm Michelle and today I'm going to be sharing some books I've been reading in the last couple months. Now I'm a part of two different book clubs. And I've been doing a lot of independent reading lately and I've really, really been enjoying it. So obviously I'm going to show you a wide array of books here. And again, this is over the last two, three months I've been reading these books. And how do I find a time to read these books? Well, I don't really watch a lot of TV. There's not a lot of things I find interesting. And I've really kind of taken a break from social media. I don't do Facebook really. I got rid of Instagram years ago and even YouTube itself. I haven't really been finding really fulfilling. So every time I've been wanting to, you know, do one of those things, I'll just pick up a book instead or I'll read before I go to bed and find little increments of time because I really do enjoy it. I do find it life giving. My preferred genre is, you know, nonfiction. I feel like if I have time to read something, I really want to broaden my mind. And that's one of the great things about the book clubs that I participate in is it, it, I'm being introduced to a wide array of books that I know that I might not necessarily be picking up, especially since I'm a more nonfiction reader. So the first one I'm going to go over is the book club I'm a part of is through the library and it's adult to read young adult. And I love this because especially as a homeschooler, I'm exposed to a lot of different books. My oldest um, is getting into the young adult books. So it's really great to be talking about this with other adults in the group and just different ideas. And it's been really wonderful. So I'm going to talk about the most recent books we've read. And if I don't have the book, I'll put a picture of it up here just because sometimes they're um, digital copies or sometimes they're library, most of the time they're library books. So I just return them when it's time. I don't keep them. So the first one I'm going to talk about that we talked about in our book club was Black Bird Blue Road. And this was a fantastic book. This was a book about a set of twins, a boy and girl and kind of their journey. So the boy has leprosy and his sister through this journey is trying to find ways to cure him. And along the way they meet um, the angel of death and they encounter a demon, half demon, half human entity. And it goes through the journey of pretty much death and how we come to understand death. And it was actually really, really deep for what I would consider a children's book. And of course I bawled at the end, but I think it was a really meaningful book and talking about the journey of death, which I think sometimes kids have a better understanding um, than adults. I think adults, we often see death as final. Well, I think children are able to see it as a stepping stone, a next step. So I really did enjoy the book and the journey. And again, it's got all these you know fantasy type elements in it. And it was great, so I recommend that one highly. The next one we recently read for the month of October was Small Spaces. This was a really good book. So we wanted to read kind of, you know, a scary, creepy book for Halloween as a group. And this was great. This was creepy, but not scary. I'm not a big fan of scary or gory type books, but it was creepy. It had some, you know, mystery to it. So it's about a girl who she recently lost her mom and, you know, how she's dealing with that grief. So it starts with her finding a woman crying by the river, trying to throw out a book. So she takes the book and she reads the book. So you're reading a story within a story and it kind of goes over the history of this um, mystery and curse type thing. And then she goes on a field trip and she realizes she's in the curse and has to deal with it. And it's got scarecrows and uh, jack-o'-lanterns and all this. So it's got some really good creepy imagery in it, but also some you know, feelings of grief and dealing with things. And um, the the main bad person is called the Smiling Man. So it does, it has a lot of great Halloween imagery in it, a lot of creepy, um, a lot of creepy imagery. So I enjoyed that book and I thought it was perfect for the month of October. So those are what we've read recently in the last two months for that book club. Next, I'm gonna do ones I've picked up myself that I've been enjoying. So the first one is Live, Learn, Love Well. And again, this is one I just randomly picked up off the shelf in the library. And it was, it was good. It was a uplifting book. It talks about, you know, this person's journey through their life and kind of overcoming certain obstacles and really being the person you want to be and having that drive to go out there and get the things you want in life. 
Now, the author is a very athletic and a fitness instructor. I believe she's a Peloton instructor. And I'm not a fitness person at all. I'm not an exercise person at all. I'm not an outdoors person at all. So, I mean, that kind of fell flat on me. But overall, I thought the book was well. It, it talks about being true to yourself and pursuing your dreams. And I enjoyed that aspect. And the physical, you know, get out and exercise part didn't bother me. It's part of her journey. So, I did enjoy that book. Uh, I bit, I just finished this one not too long ago called Raising Good Humans, A Mindful Guide to Breaking the Cycle of Reactive Parenting and Raising Kind, Confident Kids. This was a really good book. It talks about, you know, as a parent, honing in on your triggers, what kind of makes you go off. And it really got me back into mindful meditation. That's something I used to do before my youngest was born. My youngest is three and a half. And I just got out of the habit of doing it, of learning to calm my mind and focus so I've gone back into that. I use an app on my phone to kind of just do the guided meditations 10 minutes a day. And it really does make a difference in, you know, my chillness. But I really do appreciate the author and how she goes through, like I said, um, the triggers. But what's really nice in this is she goes through different examples. So she gives you real life examples, stories she's experienced, which I really like. I find that helpful when reading about, you know, especially like parenting or self-help books, that type of stuff, when you're given real life examples to really see how it works, and there's different in each chapter practice things you can do. So if you want to implement this, this is how you could do it. So I really appreciate that. And it talks about lear learning to listen to yourself and healing some of those past triggers and how to have a peaceful home. So I did, I found this a really good, helpful book. Next one I got for the month of October for me to independently read was um, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. So I've seen the movie and I think most of us are aware of the story, but I've never actually read the book before. So I thought October would be um, a great time to do that. And I'll have to say for a short book, I found it really, really wordy. And it could be because, you know, it was just written at a different time and I'm not necessarily read a lot of classical literature, so maybe I'm just not used to that, but I felt like it was a lot of flowery, over-descriptive language. But overall, I mean, it's the story of Frankenstein, and I think reading it as an adult, opposed to like seeing the movie and things, was a lot uh, different experience for me. So I did enjoy it, but I felt like it took a while to get um, to the meat of the story. A lot of it was a lot of description in the beginning. The next one is one I borrowed from the library is The Alchemist. And this one I read at the same time I was reading that Live, Learn, Love Well book. So they kind of went with each other. So this book is often recommended by self-help self gurus and those type things about, it's really a self-discovery journey again. And it's talking about fulfilling your own personal destiny and what that looks like and how that's achieved. And it just follows this person's journey on um, different obstacles they come across and it was interesting. I liked that kind of, I kept reading, I think I read it in like two days because it was an interesting read. You want to know kind of what happens next on this journey. Do they ever fulfill the thing they're looking for? And it's got some, you know, wisdom weaved in there and how you view the world and how you view your life and yourself. So I can see how it's really helpful and I thought it was an interesting book to read and it wasn't a long read. So I enjoyed that one. So that is all the books I've read in the last couple months independently. So next I'm gonna do our church book club. So if you're new here, I am a Christian, specifically Lutheran, specifically ELCA denomination, if you're curious. So we have a book club at our church and I love it, I love it. I love getting together with people and talking about our faith because although we do all adhere to the same, you know, we're all part of the same denomination, we all have different beliefs within that denomination. We have, you know, more liberal, more conservative, more progressive. We all fall in different places where, how we interpret scripture. And I think having a safe, open place to discuss that is absolutely wonderful. I think that's how we grow spiritually as people is by getting the ideas and opinions and viewpoints of different people. I don't think we should surround ourselves with people that think exactly what we think. I don't think we grow from that. So I've really been enjoying this book club and having, um, you know, a wide range of young to 
older people and the different perspectives that we're all able to bring. So how we work it is everybody chooses a book, something that has been meaningful to them or they've enjoyed. We read it as a group and then we discuss it and I think it's great. So I'm gonna go over a couple of the books we've gone through. So one of them was Don't You Care That We Are Drowning and Other Unexpected Prayers. So this one is written by a pastor and he was formerly a chaplain and it's very short as you can see. Well, what I really like about this book is it it's just short um, stories about this person's experience being uh, a clergy member and what that was like. And I think especially for people who attend church, people who don't attend church, to really understand what pastors go through. If you're new here, my husband's a pastor. He's been a pastor for 10 years. And I think some people get very stereotypical views of religious leaders, especially in Christianity, either they're the holier now type people or they're the mega church pastors. And I really think this helps you get an idea that they are people. Foremost, they're always people. And they go through some really difficult struggles as a spiritual leader. I think they take on a lot of baggage and the emotional toll that has on dealing with really difficult struggles in not just in their life but dealing with other people's grief and struggles that's a lot to take on as a human being and i'm in all the people that choose to do that i am not a person that could ever do that personally but i really liked it because it goes over you know um, different stories encounters this person has had and his spirituality and what it that ultimately he's a person i think that's a great way to be seeing our religious leaders as people so i like that one next one is primal myths creation myths around the world so this one was really good so it goes like it says around um, creation myths throughout the world so it goes through african myths ancient uh ancient egyptian myths uh, gnostic myths islam greek european buddhist China, Japan, North American myths, Central and South American. So it goes through a wide array of creation myths. And it's, um, they're really short stories. And what I really like is that it has kind of like an introduction. So it gives you some contextual knowledge about the story or the time period before reading the story which I think is really important, especially when we're talking about creation stories. And then it's just usually like a page maybe of the creation story. And it goes on to the next one. But I do like how it's grouped by regions. So you can see kind of the sim similarities between regions and how um, certain religious beliefs were spread throughout. So I really liked that aspect of it. But I found it really interesting. It was a great book to discuss as a group because we all read different creation stories and came back and talked about them. And we were able to find similar themes throughout all these different um, creation stories. And obviously it's not all Christianity. It's a lot of different religious beliefs in here. But I think when you look at a broader picture, you can find a lot of similarities. Like everyone has a creation story, how life came into being. Everybody has what happens after your death. These are the pillars of all religions. So this was really interesting to talk about with uh, a group of people, but it's something I'm really considering. I plan on having my oldest daughter do a world religion class in middle school. I plan on incorporating this book into it when we do it, but I enjoyed it. And the most recent one we did was uh, Forgive, Why Should I and How Can I? So this book was like this. There are some, I think this author made a lot of good points about forgiveness definitely relates it a lot to Christianity and how we forgive as Christians. I think he calls out a lot of really important things, like a lot of fake Christianity, what he calls fig leaves, where people mask who they really are and use Christianity to mask that. I think he talks about, you know, abuses within the church and how that's mishandled and how forgiveness is twisted and scripture verses about forgiveness are specifically twisted to kind of protect certain people in powerful roles. I do appreciate that. Um, but it's an interesting idea of what forgiveness is it, at, coming from the point of a Christian. So I enjoyed it. I enjoy books reading that I necessarily wouldn't, again, pick up. Christian literature is something I struggle with because I'm very progressive, very inclusive, and a lot of it isn't. A lot of Christian um, books out there, a lot of 
a lot of them are more conservative leaving. So I enjoyed the book. I don't agree with everything the author said, but I think it really made me think, and I think that's the great thing about a book, if it makes you really dive deep into yourself and think about, okay, so what are my thoughts on forgiveness? What do I think about? And he does give examples within the book of different situational um, things, different situations of people and how they dealt with forgiveness. And in the end, or towards the end of the book, he does give you specific ways, like step by step, how to, um, in different situations, reach a level of forgiveness. Because forgiveness can be one of the biggest struggles we have, I think, as human beings when we're wronged. It's very difficult to, um, especially in this culture where it's all about me, 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 instead of community, cancel culture, all that is addressed in the book. And I think it was an interesting read. And again, I don't agree with everything the author said, but it made me think more about what I believe. So those are the books I've been reading in the last couple months. If there's any books that you have really loved, please leave them in the comments below. I'm always looking for more variety or different types of books. And again, I'm pretty eclectic when it reads. I'll pick it up and read it. So if you have any suggestions for me, leave them in the comments below. If not, thank you for watching.